The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX. As you can see, there's a whole lot of swings up in this area on the upside. Um, so I would be a little careful chasing that to the upside, but, you know, sometimes it works. Let's take a look here at one other market that's over in that area, and that's the, the FTSE uh, doing exactly the opposite. This is the hourly chart you can see over the past week. We've had the really nice Gartley pattern form up there at 74.60. Perfect ABCD today, uh, right on the bottom there at uh, 73.30. We've had a pretty good rally so far, but this is in a downtrend, so it's already made its top. So uh, pay attention to that. If I had to say anything this week about what's happening, it would be the fact that you know, we did have that big pattern in the NASDAQ that we were looking at that lined up, well, relatively well to what we were thinking was going to happen as far as the 135 pattern. And as um, soon as I find it, and here I had it, I had my hand on it to click, and now it's disappeared. This is so frustrating. I, I'm going to figure out how to do this the right way. And um, anyway, that's neither here nor there. We'll get that done here soon enough. I wanted to, um, where is that darn thing? I just did it. It has to be here somewhere. Oh, shut the front door. First of all, um, our friend Beverly from Princeton sent us a really interesting article. I want to bring this to your attention. This really is very important, folks. This is an article out of the New Sentinel, and it's estimated that 150 to 200 million pigs have been hit by a global plague of biblical proportions. Now, everybody knows that there's some type of African swine flu over there, right? Well, the key is, you know, the markets don't always uh, follow what the news is. Remember, we've had some really big moves. Let's take a look at the hogs, just to give you an example, because I wanted to show you two different things. And uh, hold on here, just a second here. If you'll look at this is the June hogs. Remember, we were talking about the June hogs holding that 88 level. You can see they've went from 88 up to 92, four cent move. We still think they got a chance to go to this area. Now, these are the June hogs. Now, down at that area where we were at 72, uh, you'll notice that that was a 78% retracement, and that's, that flu was still going on, folks. They knew about this a long time ago. Now, the second thing you want to do is to go out and look at the Christmas hogs in December, and you're going to see something this like a totally different commodity. And, and there we are. Let's get this up here so we'll be able to see it. And here are the December hogs. You see how much stronger they are? So that tells you that this thing is probably going to last uh, longer than some people might think. Now, the key to this is the fact that when you see newspaper reports, TV reports, and all the other things that are going on uh, with the news, you know, be really careful because the news follows the trend, folks. And when it's over, it's over. One of the things that has saved my bacon and I mean, since we're talking about hogs, is the fact that these uh, reports, when you hear them, are just, you got to be careful. The biggest one that I can remember, of course, was the Desert Storm. Uh, you know, they were, <laughs> they wouldn't even, <laughs> they didn't want to trade crude oil because they thought it was going to go up so much. And what did it do? It dropped $11. Yes, the cattle, the problem, let's take a look at that, uh, Mark. Let's take a look at the cattle because th that's one of the ones I wanted to mention because it, it hasn't worked. You know, we were talking about that yesterday, that it had to hold that 111.50, 111 area, and look what happened. It just keeps going down. But the, hey, there's nothing wrong with taking a, a nibble at them there, but, you know, it's much better to be out of a market wishing you were in than in a market wishing you were out. So you got to get out of the way. It keeps going down. That's the problem. The first mistake teaches. The second mistake kills. Your first mistake is you made a trade that didn't work. 
The second mistake is you didn't do a darn thing about it. And that's the difference between a professional trader and the neophyte trader is the neophyte will just sit there and use the old proverbial hope and pray method. And folks, that one is a really tough one to live off of. So keep in mind that that's what we're paying attention to uh, on some of these things is how the news reacts. We're having some nice moves in corn and wheat. Uh, the beans have not turned yet, but boy, they're really getting close, boys and girls. They've got a lot of things going for them uh, coming up, so we'll be watching it really closely um, this coming um, weekend as we do our weekly report. Take a look here, and this is the Christmas soybean oil. Uh, we're down at this level here. Uh, uh, Mr. Z, what is the U.S.? Is that the Swiss franc? Uh, I, I, I don't know what the U.S.S.S.F. Is that Swiss franc? If it is, I can do that. But look at December oil. You can see that it's making that beautiful pattern down there. By the way, we'll have the Wizard Winsky on at the break. So uh, stay tuned. He's always got some really good things, uh, astrological. And I have a really important announcement to make. And that is we're going to have one of our old friends on next week. Shane Smolian, the old wolf trader, will be on. He's got some new stuff to talk to us about, so uh, I don't know what day of the week it's going to be. We might even have him on two days if we can, but the, he is going to be here, uh, you know, doing the uh, show for us uh, next week. So we'll see. Let's take a look at the Swiss here. Don't trade this one very often, but let's just uh, – not not any reason why I don't. It's just so many others that I don't. And you want to see it on a shorter-term basis, so let's get it up here. We just hit a 78% level, Mr. Z, right on the money. Hold on. Let's just get this thing moving down to the upside. There we go. Uh, this is about – I hope this is short enough, Mr. Z, but we'll uh, we'll take a quick look at it here so you can see it. There you go. It just hit that 78% level at uh, 102.15. We're down about uh, 20 pips from that level, but it was spot on. That was the exact number. Let's look at it on the daily just to see where we are. Oh, we just made a big ABCD, Mr. Z. Shut the front door and raise the rent. This is a sale up in here. There you go. You see, uh, we completed that ABCD up there at 102.50, so that that's a real key level. So going above that would be very, very bullish. And then on the other, on the other side, it could be, um, uh, you know, bearish. But that 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 is a big ABCD up there at that 102.15 in the in the Swiss versus the dollar. Now the euro is doing nothing; it's just bouncing around. We got as low as 111.35. We're trading 111.64. Frankly, uh, we're probably going to come in here Monday with this full moon, new moon, and see some pretty good uh, pretty good action. We're bouncing a little bit in the gold. We rallied about uh, nine bucks this morning. Uh, but I still believe we have to wait until Monday when we get this new moon out of the way. Um, the gold is actually holding up relatively well. Um, the silver uh, has held up. Uh, well, if you can call not falling apart holding up, but uh, I still think Monday is the day we want to be watching that as uh, as near as I can tell. That That's the way I'm looking at it. So whether that's the right way or not, I don't know, but that's that's what I'm that's what I'm watching all righty now let's move on to uh, a couple of things um, uh, hold on one second and we'll move up here to a second here we'll be right back 877-927-6648 The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
the TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, there's been some news on the cryptocurrencies this morning. Uh, Facebook has announced that they are going to start accepting a Bitcoin as payment. Uh, boy, that's a, that's a big news. You'll notice that Bitcoin is holding up. I don't know if that news uh, made it go up or not, but uh, that's what's going on. We've uh, cleared 5,600 with the ease, and we haven't been able to back off to a 382 yet. So that's one of the things that you should be watching for as you go through. Folks, uh, the, the, regarding the gold and silver, I know we're up about 10 bucks from the low on the silver, or on the gold and 20 cents on the silver. If today was the low, then so be it. Uh, I might have to pay up for it, but uh, I'm waiting till Monday. That's basically what I want to be watching. Okay, we have Mr. Z on the line. John, how are you doing? Hey, Larry. What can I do wanted for you, my to, friend? Wanted to ask you, uh, when you're speaking to Simon only here the past weeks. Yes. Are you learning any? Are you learning any secrets from Mr. Monley? <laughs> uh, secrets pertaining to. What could be a catalyst to uh, uh, get corn, wheat, and or beans to rally? He, he thinks it's weather-related, John. He thinks, if anything, it's the wetness across the, the Midwest and the upper Midwest from all the, the snow and the, the groundwater that's there and the continuing storms. There's flooding in Indiana and in Illinois and stuff, so that could be it. And if the, later the corn goes in, uh, you know, the more susceptible it is. But like he mentioned, you know, the, some of these hybrid corns are pretty tough. But, uh, you know, the corn has rallied, uh, you know, about 16 cents off the bottom so far. I'll just take a take a quick look at it so everybody can see it. But uh, it's actually looking pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting to see what happens on Monday because we've got this full moon in. But we've got major ABCD patterns in both uh, soybean oil and soybeans. I posted the... Uh, the soybean oil went into the room uh, this morning just a little while ago, 
and uh, the soybean meal has pretty much uh, the exact same pattern. And uh, so th these are, you know, these are ABCDs coming into a full moon. So I have to be a buyer here of the, uh, you know, of these. So here, I'll put the meal up, John, so you can take a look at it. But they're all completed. I mean, they're, you know, they're down there right where, uh, you know, where the pedal meets the metal. So it looks to me like we're getting ready to, uh, to go higher. Larry, thanks so much on that. Uh, and, and, of course, as you know, um, I'm bottom picking in all of these markets uh, as you are. And, of course, I know you and I talked about this earlier. I had actually bought that. I had rebought. I had bought back the Deese Corn Sunday evening when the futures opened there at uh, 8 o'clock New York time. Uh, I just wanted to share this, um, uh, this idea with you. Um, in looking at the daily and or the weekly charts, we see all those commodities are getting deeply oversold. Yes, and sir. What what uh, what is just plain fact of the matter? We get data coming out of the government's uh, CFTC department, where they uh, where they post every Friday at three thirty, commitment of traders data which gives us, you know, whether or not the, the numbers are entirely accurate or fudged in some way. What the picture we're, we're getting painted for us is that speculators as a group are massively short corn, wheat, and beans in aggregate at record levels. And one thing you and I have both learned uh, in decades of trading is uh, the lopsided behavior, the lopsided positioning of, uh, of speculators as a group always sets the top, always sets the bottom. Because uh, those speculators, and of course you and I are you know, small players in that group, but they press the trend. And as I say, uh, speculators as a group are record in aggregate short these. And what I have come to learn over the years, Larry, is that when a market is heavily, and let's take bottom picking, um, it is very typical for a uh, commodity futures market when speculators are massively short, for a market to rally, at, uh, to rally 10 up to 40% from low to, to rally high, merely on short covering alone, having nothing to do with a change in supply demand. And uh, I just bring to uh, our recent attention, we saw just that sort of move off the last, last September lows in coffee, where coffee futures formed a low somewhere near 100 a buck a pound, and rallied, I think, what did they get up to, Larry, 125, 130? Yeah, 125. Days, yep. And that was mm -hmm. nothing but short covering. And it's still a bear market, but you had a beautiful large percentage move. So uh, I'm thinking that sort of thing is at least potential in soybeans, corn, and, and wheat. So, uh, so thanks for sharing the patterns and size update. I appreciate that. John, one of the things I'm watching, of course, is like you, is the first time I see that this open interest is changing a little bit. You know, that's going to be a giant green light for me that, uh, you know, these uh, shorts are finally starting to get a little nervous. They have no reason to be nervous because it's been going straight down for months. But as you mentioned, when it does turn, it can turn with a vengeance. You know, John, stay with me just a second because I wanted to bring uh, the coffee up because it's really interesting where we are uh, right now. Because uh, we have made that big 1.27 expansion expansion on the coffee down there at 87, we rallied up about eight cents, and now we're setting over the last 10 days, we're making a really nice little guardly here at this 90 level uh, in the uh, May coffee. So as long as it can uh, uh, hold up in here, we, we've got a chance here for a nice little bottom in the coffee market. I don't trade this, but several. Folks do, and so I do follow it. But uh, it's a real interesting spot down here uh, in the coffee. We can hold this level of around 90, and any move above 96 uh, could put the El Fuego in the coffee. This thing could really get hot and uh, really get up there. Because as you mentioned, in September, in October, we moved uh, 30 cents 
you know, that's uh, what, uh, a little over $8,000 in a matter of a month in coffee. So if it moves, it can really go. And now we're at a really low risk area uh, in the coffee market as, as we see it. Yes, indeed. Thanks for uh, highlighting that. One last thing in parting, I'm just going to mention, I asked you earlier about the dollar Swiss franc. The reason yes. being, Larry, um, if, if we get a turn down in the dollar, and I'm talking of the dollar versus the big established developed market countries, so that would be the Eurozone, you know, uh, Japan, China, uh, and the Swissies included in that. If we get a turn down, it, you know, uh, and it can be just temporarily turning down, that would also be a contributing catalyst to bring some export business back to this country in the grains as the dollar is falling, foreign currency is rising, and that could uh, be a, another potential catalyst for shorts mm -hmm. to cover in the corn, beans, wheat, and coffee for that matter. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, looking at that uh, Swiss, the dollar Swiss, because the Swiss franc amongst the big developed market uh, currencies has been weakest against the dollar. Look and see if that will turn. Hey, John, thanks for joining us, my friend, and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Okay, folks, it's with a great deal of excitement that we're inviting one of our favorite guests on the line today, Norm Winsky from Astro Trends. 
Norm, call it to the minute, buddy. You've got the mic. Okay, thanks a lot, Larry. Thanks for having me on your show. What's that again? That's it. You have the mic. You're, okay, uh, I have my notes on the screen, and hopefully everybody can see them. I'm reviewing when I was on your show last on April 18th. You might remember that was a Thursday. Friday was a holiday, and we had the uh, full moon on that Friday with the holiday. So let's go. Uh, I featured the following planetary events were occurring around that time. Uh, the night of the 17th, we had Venus uh, hit aphelion. That's as Venus goes around the sun. Aphelion is its farthest point. The planets are not a perfect circle going around the sun. They are, what's the word? <laughs> elliptical, elliptical, right, elliptical. And so uh, there's a far, a close point and a far point, and that's what Venus is doing. By the way, it takes Venus 225 days to go around the sun, which is 0.617 of the Earth. There's a little Fibonacci thing there between Venus and the Earth. All right, we had Venus happy healing. Let's go look at the charts that are connected to Venus. I showed this when I was last on your show. There you have cattle, copper, cotton, stock, sugar, and wheat. And here's your cattle chart. And those green arrows there show you where the 17th and the 18th were. And that was a pretty nice top there, I would say. And there you go. Here's your copper. And there's the 17th, 18th, those two green arrows. And the 17th was the high of the month. So well, that's pretty good. Here's your cotton. Again, we had a double top there between the 17th and the 18th. Not too bad, right at the top. And here's your sugar. Made a double bottom on the 17th. The sugar now was involved with the, uh, oh, we're going to scroll down. I repeated a line that was in the top of the notes there. Uh, that we had the full moon of Libra. Libra is also a ruling, Venus is a ruling sign for sugar, but Libra is a ruling sign for sugar and wheat. And we had the full moon of Libra on that Friday. So we'll be, we have a couple of points there. We have the uh, Venus going aphelion, 17th, 18th. And then right after that, we have the full moon of Libra. So the sugar made a low and then it made a high. And there we go. Here's your wheat. Wheat was not as cooperative. And made a tiny little top there, 17, 18, and then it just kept going lower, and so that's going to be a red arrow miss. All right, moving on ahead here now, here's your corn. It made a little top there on the full moon on the 20, Monday the 22nd, and then we rolled over. Here's one of my methods. Uh, uh, you see these lines here? You box in the prices for our time window, and then if you're not sure what the beans were, not real clear signal there. So once you break out of that box, uh, then you know what to, where to go. And the beans broke out at about the Tuesday, the 23rd, I believe, and they were headed lower. So even if you're wrong, uh, you know, I, it would be easy to, to lean toward buying here because the beans had been going down. And But if you break that line, that green line there at the bottom of your window, uh, then you need to stop and reverse and go the other way. Here's your gold. Gold rallied up uh, slightly into the Monday, the 22nd. And here's your silver was leaving a little clearer. Had a nice little rally into uh, the 22nd, Monday. And then uh, kind of got, you had a chance there to make some money. Here's your currencies. Here's your Aussie dollar. It rallied up into right about the, I think that's the 18th. Uh, so we were just a little bit early there. And here's your Canadian dollar was even better. It rallied right into the Monday the uh, right Monday the uh, 20, 22nd. Here's your euro at uh, say 17. There's your 18. It topped on the 18th. You had a chance also to possibly sell it just a little bit lower on the 22nd. And here's your U.S. dollar. Made I had multiple signals for the dollar, and uh, we had the moon, and we also had the U.S. dollar is tied to the U.S. natal chart. Natal chart is we take a snapshot of the planets at the time of the uh, beginning of something, like when you were born or when a country begins. The U.S. Uh, began on July the 4th, 1776, so we're looking at the planets for that. And so we had made a high there on the uh, 17th. I think I had the uh, 18th, 18th, and so that would have been right there. And we went down, we had multiple signals over that weekend. 
on the full moon weekend to the holiday weekend. And we made a low there on the 22nd with my multiple si uh, s signals. You know, here's the different things I had to the U.S. chart. Okay, and then we had the last thing that we had was that Pluto uh, was due to turn retrograde the night of the 23rd. And that involves uh, cocoa, coffee, hogs, stocks, and T-bonds. And so let's go look at that. Here's your, uh, plus we had the full moon. Uh, the stock market, you know, is tied to all this stuff, you know. So that's look at the, the stock market. So there's your Venus apihelion there on the 18th. Then over the weekend, had the multiple signals. And we kind of made a low there between the, the, uh, the 18th and Monday the 22nd. And then we went up and made a high with Pluto turning retrograde on the night of the 23rd. On the 24th, made a little uh, short-term top there. And here's your T-bonds. Did okay on the full moon, but they kind of ignored Pluto retrograde, so that would be a miss. And But the Coco was uh, super duper. Uh, you'd, uh, if I were writing a textbook or something, I'd probably put this in as an example of how it should work. There's the cocoa coming down, 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 right to where Pluto turned retrograde uh, into the, in the 24th. And then it had a really nice rally up. That's, that's like, uh, <laughs> that's uh, just about perfect, you know. Here's your hogs. The hogs decided that uh, they didn't want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, participate you know, with the plants there. And so they did not uh, find their trough there uh, when Pluto turned retrograde. Yeah, it's a little hog joke there, Larry. All right, so here's your I coffee. Coffee, because Pluto is in Capricorn, which is the ruling sign for coffee, we're going to watch a little, watch when Pluto turns retrograde here. And you did have a little bit of a short-term top there on the 24th, and then the chop, chop, chop sideways. And the, in passing, I, although not part of my official notes, because uh, uh, April, I started May with April 29th, Saturn turned retrograde the night of the 29th, and so Saturn is the ruling planet for coffee, and sure enough, on the 30th, coffee made a high, and it's been going down ever since. Larry, I don't know if you know or not, but you should not be in May coffee. You should be in July coffee now. Yes, the, I, yep. the old New York markets would always roll over several weeks ahead of their expiration, unlike the Chicago markets. Chicago, you could usually go almost to the first of the, that month. But New York, New York is a New York time zone there, you know, with the New York Minute. They were like crude oil. You always got to be, uh, you know, way ahead of the uh, the the t name of the month, you know. So I think if you check the volume there, I bet the volume is dropping way off on your main oh, yeah. contract. It's July. We're in July coffee. That's when we're watching anyway. Oh, I th okay. Yeah. I thought I heard you say May. Anyway, I, I did want say to May, your... another, another misstep from the old Terre Haute. Well, I didn't, you know, <laughs> didn't want your people to get involved in there, and then the next thing they know, they got uh, 37,500 pounds of coffee in their in their front yard, you know. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. yeah, they don't deliver anyway. Hey, Norm, uh, we'll be right back. Can you stay with us for another segment? Maybe tell Absolutely. us what's going to happen next? Absolutely, please. Okay, thank, thank you. you. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when 
and gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. All right, we're back, folks, and we're chatting with Norm Winsky. Why don't you tell the folks what's going to happen next? Norm, we have a question from someone. Is there anything special about the new moon that we're having tomorrow? I'll be talking about that in one minute. So hold your horses. As when we went off to commercial land, I was talking about coffee. And uh, we have uh, right now we're in the bearish mode for coffee. But you will see coming up here when I talk about what's coming up this weekend, we're set, possibly setting up for a short-term low in coffee. And so we could get a bounce. But longer term, because the ruling planet for coffee ha is now retrograde, that's Saturn. That tends to be bearish for prices. So even if we get a bounce, I think the coffee is not may not be done on the downside longer term. You could, you could certainly get a bounce here. We'll be talking about that in a minute. Uh, just for fun, because I have more room on this page, I don't usually follow the NASDAQ that closely. Because like you say, Larry, it's the pork bellies of stock indices. So it's a little too crazy for me. But uh, it did. Uh, you, you're talking about that pattern there on Monday. And guess what? That, so that night was when Saturn went retrograde, and the next day we gapped down, and there's your Saturn retrograde there for the, for the NASDAQ, you know? All right, I got one more thing to show you. In Terre Haute, they call this the peace de resistance, Larry. <laughs> and so here's my version of the Bradley model for last month. My April went from April 1 to the 20th, Friday the 26th, and I drew that blue line a month in advance, and there's your S&P. 510 minute bar chart. I think that worked out fairly well. So there we go. All That's right. Can yesterday. You, can what's going to happen tomorrow? I, I can see, see it I'm perfectly. On the we, want to, we want to know what's going to happen in the future, Norm. Well, that's on the next page. Well, let's go to the next page. Well, how about that? All right, here we are. Now we got coming events. So this weekend we have a, a couple of uh, big events. And Monday, we have a bunch of stuff to happen to over the weekend. And here we go. So we got Jupiter lining up with Saturn. Jupiter's in Sag in its own sign. Saturn's in Capricorn in its own sign. And so we'll be, here's your shopping list now. I've made these even bigger, so make sure everybody could see them. Uh, nobody cares about oats, but it's kind of like some of these things you follow that you're not going to trade, but they're kind of fun to watch. Oats. And we got coffee again. There you go. So we might... It, coffee scrape at bottom there, and something might be uh, percolating there in coffee, you know, right? And here's your stocks. Then we got a new moon in Taurus, the bull, and so we're going to be watching your, your round up your usual suspects with your financial grains and precious metals. And uh, we're running a special this weekend because the new moon's a Taurus. 
on your cattle and your cotton, okay? And there we go. And then we got some things for the U.S. for changing trend for your stocks, T bonds, U.S. dollar. And then also, oh, that's out in the that's that we're, that's uh, the out in the 14th. After this weekend, after Monday, things get kind of quiet astrologically. So we really don't have anything important now. All the way till the 14th. After this Monday, then the 15th, we have Jupiter 90 to Neptune. And that stocks T bond, oh, U.S. Neptune, sorry, stocks T bonds, U.S. dollar, and U.S. oil. Now here's some special points I have just for the stock market. This is some GAN math, and Mr. GAN loved was big on mathematics and numbers, and and felt that some numbers have special properties, and he loved the square numbers. So for example, on Monday, immediately following the new moon, uh, May 6th, we'll have 65 square days which is 4,225 days from the October 11, 2007 major high, which was the retest of the Internet high in 2000, and that led to the big meltdown in 08. That was a uh, big top there on the October 11, 2007, and which was also, I think that was a new moon too, and Mercury turned retrograde that day. And then I mean, we have a big cluster here. This is very unusual. We have like a three-day cluster with the 14th of May, 61 squared days is 3,721 days from the March 6, 909 low. And then uh, we also have, the after that, a music map. This is based on uh, good old Pythagoras has uh, you know, developed the uh, uh, mathematics for our whole musical system, Western uh, civil musical system. And so uh, the, one of those numbers is 11,585. Uh, from the August 25th, 87 major high. And uh, there we go. That led to the crash of 87. And then May, then the 15th, we have 181 square days. That's 32,761 days from September 3rd, 1929, major top. We also have on my Fibonacci time cycles, they're clustering there for something big over the this weekend. And then again on the 8th. So there, that takes you through the, to the future. Hopefully you wrote those dates down and those times. Contact me if you want more information, and which brings us to the next page. Uh, all the free classes and stuff I'm giving away. I must be crazy. And so call me, contact Norm. I got free classes. I can teach you the day trade in 20 minutes if you like. I got a more extensive class. I got a deluxe class which will teach you uh, kind of a summary of everything I've learned in the last 50 years. Uh, for those who are new, don't know me, I'm a former Chicago floor trader. So on the floor at CBOE and board, Chicago Board of Trade for 12 years. And back in the 70s and the 80s, I'm an old dinosaur like Larry. And there we go. So you contact me. Any questions from the, uh, from the uh, Tiger Den or anywhere else, you know? Okay, that sounds pretty good. Well, Norm, maybe when we get near that next full moon back on the 18th of May, we might uh, have you back on maybe on the 17th if you've got a few minutes. That would be great. And did you have any, anybody there in the Tiger Den or any place have any, uh, any questions? Uh, doesn't seem to be any today. You've covered it pretty well, I believe. So you did a good job. Uh, your check will be delayed by two days, so wait for it on Monday, okay? All righty. All right, my and, friend, uh, listen. All my free classes, you know, come with that. Uh, uh, you mentioned, Larry, you get to double your money back guarantee, you know. <laughs> all right, Norm, listen, thanks a lot, my friend. Have a wonderful all weekend. All right, thanks a lot. Take you care, bet. everybody. Have a great weekend. Okay, folks, uh, we're having a nice little rally here due to these nice numbers that we're having on the economy. Uh, keep a, a close eye on that number of uh, 20. 39.39 in the S&P. That's a 61% retracement back. Uh, the NASDAQ is actually um, uh, getting close to that number already. So uh, any move above that could tell us that we're going to close really strong today. But uh, that's still a little bit early uh, in the game if we're going to see that. I did want to mention something uh, about the Elliott Wave. Uh, one of our friends from uh, TFNN, Dan, Tiger Dan, sent me this really cool chart from uh, the Elliott Wave folks, but I wanted to point this out. This is going back to the 1930s when the Dow got down to about 40 and change. You'll notice that green arrow there, folks? 
that was the crash of 1987 believe it or not i mean that was just absolutely unbelievable that we <laughs> that that was the crash i mean if you just look at that it was really nothing had happened and you know you can see what's happened since that time and now they're looking for a projection of 28,272 in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The important thing that I wanted to mention here is the fact that, uh, you know, I am not a long-term trader. You know, I, I'm basically trying to control the risk a little better uh, on the shorter term than you can the longer term, and that's that's what I really uh, try to do. Plus, I enjoy trading, and so that's something that uh, enters into it, too. So let's take a break here and pay a few bills and we'll come right back and we're going to talk about the Treasury bonds. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to talk about the Treasury bonds. Uh, today's low was a 61% retracement of the low that we made on Monday. Uh, as you can see from the chart that we've just posted, this is a relatively bearish chart. Uh, on a longer term basis, of course, you'll notice we had that head and shoulders bottom that worked perfectly. We had the ABCD correction went up to exactly the 61% retracement and that was it. Ever since 150.20, we've been heading lower and it's just a matter of uh, time before we turn to the downside because uh, regardless of what they're telling us at the Federal Reserve, these charts are saying that interest rates look like they want to go higher. Now that could change. 
that that's where it looks like. So let's keep an eye on that. I think I would have a little trouble getting above 149 on this move, but it is certainly possible given the news environment that we see coming out of uh, the major capitals here of the United States, mainly the one in Washington, D.C. But anyway, keep an eye on that bond because it does look like we do want to go lower. Whether that affects the stock market or not, I don't know. I've posted that chart of the NASDAQ. Uh, so many times this week that I don't want to do it again, but there's a lot of resistance up there at that high we made uh, on Tuesday, so sort of pay attention to that. We have these big breaks, and then the market comes storming back. Uh, the key level to watch in the S&P, of course, is that 29.39 uh, in the June futures because that is the 61% retracement of the whole move back, and we've made that in a matter of hours because we did make lower lows yesterday and then snap back. That lower low was right on a 1.27 expansion, folks. I know a lot of folks, you look at that, so uh, pay uh, close attention to it. Anyway, that's uh, what we're watching here. So uh, have a wonderful weekend, a happy uh, uh, new moon, and live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. And folks, do something nice for somebody this weekend. You know, spur of the moment, just uh, try to help somebody, whether it's doing a deed or giving them a cup of coffee or something like that, because there's a lot of folks out there are hurting. So that's it. May God bless. Mm -hmm.